Hey guys, it's Kevin from Mixed Coach. It's time for another episode of the Mixed Coach Minute. Today is, and for the next few uh, Mixed Coach Minute episodes, I've got my friend Stone Walters from the UK, and uh, Stone has been a Mixed Coach member for a while, and Stone always has great questions. You've probably read some of his blog posts on uh, um, Levels Demystified, and uh, what was the other one, Stone? Gain, uh Loud uh, compression. Demysti- compression and loudness right, yeah. demystified. Stone yeah, is writing yeah. some really great articles for Mixed Coach and Stone. Thank you for that. But Stone had a great question the other day, and I thought, hey, Stone, why don't we just get together uh, and do a couple of episodes of the Mixed Coach Minute? And he uh, uh, agreed to do this. So, uh, Stone, thank you for showing up today. And uh, and I think you had some, some a couple of questions that you wanted to ask, and uh, I guess yeah. I'll just throw it to you. Well, cool. Firstly, th- Kevin, thank you so much for allowing me to, to, to put these questions to you. <laughs> I think one of the things I find interesting about the whole mixing process, um, where, whether you're learning to mix or as you kind of progress is, I guess the more you mix is the more you start to do things intuitively. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it comes to setting levels, um, I, was, I was thinking about if you could find a level uh, that you start a mix with, what would it be? So, for example, if you were to, say, start with a kick, Um, what level would you set that kick at so that you could build the entire mix around that level so the kick almost acts like an anchor point? Right, okay. Well, it's funny that you ask this because when I first started mixing, I think I was the same as about every other mixer in that I was very drum-centric. I was very driven by how great drums sounded. I had mentors that... I would strive and I would copy and try to make sure their drums, my drums sounded like theirs. So as a young mixer, uh, I wanted my kick to be first and foremost, even even better than the vocals. I didn't care as long as my kick sounded great. That's all I cared. So um, I actually had a um, another mentor to say, if you're going to make the kick drive the mix and you're going to set everything relative on the kick, then set your kick at, and he said minus three. I have since found out that uh, you know, and and it was that was VU or um, um, RMS. Uh, it was on the uh, Astuder A80 and uh, a, tr- a Tascam, not a Tascam, um, a Soundcraft console, and it had VU meters on it. Right. So I found that if I if I made the kick go to minus six on the uh, on the VU meter, that my mix tended to happen. A little more easily, so I did minus six on the kick, and then I would add a, all the other drums to it, pulling down the drums if the kick got too loud or too soft. I would pull down the other drums, and once so you the, keep you keep the kick static, then more I would or less. keep the kick static and make the other drums. And you know, one thing I found is that if you can't seem to get the drums loud enough, turn the control room monitor up, right? And that'll make you mix the kick or the drums, you know, at the level that they should be. But I did find that if I pulled the kick up to minus six, that the 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 mix did t- tend to happen. Sometimes it would happen on the on the light side. In other words, I would have to gain up things just a little bit at the very end of a mix. But to me, that's always better than pulling things back. Right. Um, uh, at least in psychologically speaking, that was. Now, I, I guess um, these days, since a, not a lot of people are using the VU meters, I found that. Um, the meters on Pro Tools, typically, if you if you do the same approach with the kick and you go to minus, uh, what is where is it where the the level goes from green to yellow? Green to yellow. I, th- I think it's around minus twelve, minus ten. Okay. Peak. Well, yeah. I, I found out, and as a matter of fact, I'm in the middle of opening a session to to verify that. But I remember soloing a kick the other day and thinking, well, that's like at the top of the green. So I think that right. if you uh, um, are gain staging your mix from the kick perspective. If you gain stage it, you solo the kick and and it's at minus ten or twelve, or yep. right where the yellow turns green. You'll usually be about right as far as an anchor point as as far as kick is concerned. Uh, now, as far as vocals or anything else, I, I couldn't tell you, but I, I happen to know the answer to this question because I was one of those young mixers at once that wanted everything. You know, to be, I wanted people to comment on my kick sound first right. <laughs> <laughs> and my drum so, sounds. So then, do you think if you're going to use a different instrument as a starting point and you want, or as an anchor point, for example, the vocal or, or maybe say a bass driven track, do you think if you kind of took the same approach and started with the vocal or the bass at that level and then mixed everything relative to that, you would still have healthy, 
healthy levels and, and, and a relatively well-balanced mix. Well, I'm assuming, Stone, that the reason that you and probably anybody else will answer this is to kind of build this into a workflow. If you know that yeah. you go to an instrument first and that's your pivot or the, your anchor um, mm -hmm. instrument, as you're, as you're calling it, I would say the best thing that you could possibly do is to find your best mix where it's gain staged, everything, nothing is peaking, everything seems to be flowing from one plug in to the next without a lot of peaking, uh, you're not killing your master bus compressor, then I would say to do some forensics on that mix, solo the kick and find out, okay, the kick is around minus 12, minus 10, uh, the vocal tends to be soloed around this particular point, and the bass tends to be around this particular point and then um because i might like to mix the kick a little lower than some people i might li yeah. like to mix it a little louder than some people then you can dissect your mix and you can find out what those anchor um gain levels yeah, are for your mix uh, to me that would be the absolute best thing that you could do uh, if you're wanting to build speed into your workflow and you know that okay kick needs to be at minus six, the snare needs to be uh, relative to that, and then the hat and the toms and the bass, and then and so that you can build a static mix that is pretty much right without you having to pull everything down. To me, mm -hmm. the absolute best thing you could do is to, is to work on your perfect mix mm -hmm. and then uh, find those anchor points after that. And in your experience, when you when you start off with the the kick as the anchor point, where would your bass come in, for example, relative to the kick? Would it be coming in uh, a little bit lower than that? Will your vocal be above the kick? Will well, your snare? It's a funny I, mean, thing. I, know, I know it's a difficult question. No, it's difficult. a good question because I've actually experimented with this because I worked with a client a few years ago, and um, and one of the things he made me do which I thought was a little silly, but it made complete sense when I heard what he was talking about. Uh, a lot of times when I get the mix in, I'll mute the kick drum and make sure that the bass carries the mix. In other words, wow. you don't miss the kick so much. You wish it was there, but you don't miss it. Um, right. So that's how loud I need the bass. And then I'll mute the bass and unmute the kick and make sure that the kick can also carry. Brilliant. And then what you may end up with is both of them being too loud, but relative to each other, they are codependent and independent at the same time. Make right. sense? Perfect. And I've sense. done that, and that's something I do actually do. If I've got questions about if the bass should be louder, I'll mute the kick drum. And if the bass can still carry the mix, and the bass player's mother wouldn't complain <laughs> about the, the level yeah. being too low, <laughs> then, I, then I count it as a, as, a, as a win as far as level is concerned. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kevin. It's incredible. Yeah, it's a great question, Stone. And I hope uh, I hope this question uh, and the answer helps you guys on uh, watching the Mix Coach Minute. I appreciate you tuning in every day. Uh, I'm sure that Stone will agree that uh, Mix Coach Member is the best membership site for learning to mix and getting valuable insight, not from just me, but from a lot of really great mixers. We get a new song every month. We get different styles every month, and uh, and I really think you should check it out. So, uh, Stone, thanks for the great question, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.